Before and Alison is here uh, to have a look at the uh, international papers. Of course, Brexit is dominating them today, really. Theresa May's uh, triggering of Article 50, Alison. Yes, and like yesterday, we're going to start by looking at some of the front pages. Mm -hmm. The Daily Mail is saying cheers to a great British future, and it's accompanied by a rather jubilant picture of Nigel Farage, um, the, guard, the godfather of the Brexit, you could say, and, and he's wearing his Union Jack socks, drinking a pint. Charming. Right? <laughs> uh, yesterday's front pages mostly focused on Theresa May signing her letter to the EU, and we can see that today many front pages focus on the handoff of that letter. You can see it's on the front page of the free newspaper Metro. We see Tusk, uh, Tusk receiving that letter with the word adieu, emphasis on the EU. And meanwhile, the Daily Telegraph also focuses on the letter handoff as a magnificent moment. Now, these, of course, are mainly uh, right-wing papers in the UK, Alison. Not such uh, a magnificent moment this for the pro-EU press, is it? No, it's not. And there's a cartoon in The Independent that paints a very different picture of this delivery. I should warn you, it's a little bit gross. Uh, we see Theresa May dumping a steamy pile of... Let's call it manure. Even more charming. <laughs> right, at the EU's doorstep. Um, right. And she's using a wheelbarrow. It says Article 50, hand delivered by Barrow. And now that's a play on the name of the man who actually delivered that letter, mm -hmm. Sir Tim Barrow, who's Britain's permanent representative to the EU. The Times also has a rather negative cartoon. They're showing what various historic aut autographs will cost you. So there we have Queen Elizabeth, the British officer Horatio Nelson, Winston Churchill. All of those are pretty pricey, but they're nothing compared to the whopping 50 billion pounds that Theresa May's signature on Article 50 is going to cost. And that cost isn't just going to be financial, apparently. No, both sides have a lot to lose, and many papers are really worried about how ugly this could get. Politico says the talks will be tedious, nasty, and painful. They say despite all the regret European leaders expressed yesterday, they've made it clear that they want a hard bargain, and that could doom the talks and make a hard Brexit really the only option. Another thing the UK has to lose is Scotland, and Scottish First Minister Nicola Sturgeon has an editorial in The Guardian today reiterating her commitment to holding that referendum on Scottish independence. She says it would make sense to do it within the 18 to two month year timeline of the Brexit negotiations. And she really digs into Theresa May in this editorial and says that since Britain has made this choice of autonomy, the Prime Minister cannot turn around and preach to Scotland about self-determination. Now, yesterday's triggering of Article 50 has already had one uh, negative impact on the UK. The Independent reports on, on a spike in online hate speech. Yeah, this was recorded by researchers at a data, data science lab at Cardiff University. And the Independent reports that British authorities were actually already anticipating this. You might remember that last summer after the vote, the UK already saw a rise in violence against non-British residents. It's even believed to have led to the death of a Polish man, who's that's the memorial pictured in that photo. And according to researchers, the UK is now entering a new darker phase in relations with minority individuals. Theresa May, she's trying to be um, conciliatory, isn't she, Alison? Uh, a letter from her addressing Europeans, if you like, is uh, appearing in quite a few uh, European newspapers today. It is, and for this article, we're going to leap back to the French press for a moment. Um, one of the newspapers that is published in is Aujourd'hui en France, Le Parisien. In this letter, she's really seeking to reassure... Well, it's um, she's really seeking to reassure Europeans that the UK is not abandoning them. She says, we're leaving the European Union, but we are not leaving Europe. So she insists she wants the European Union to move on and prosper without the UK. OK, we're going to change topics uh, now. We're going to move to the US, where a discrimination faced by black women in the workplace has uh, come into the spotlight. Yeah, this is after a politician from California, Maxine Walters, was made fun of on television by Fox News host Bill O'Reilly. She was a guest on his show. You can see her picture there. And... He said he didn't listen to her because to what she was saying because he was too distracted by her hair. Um, that same day, actually, at a White House press briefing, the press secretary, Sean Spicer, made a similar comment to a black journalist criticizing her body language. He said he was too distracted by her head nodding to listen to what she was saying. And Fox host Bill O'Reilly apologized, but both of these events sparked outrage among black women who were really frustrated by having to deal with these kinds of comments really every day with people talking about their physical appearance and not actually listening to them. So many of them began tweeting under a hashtag, Black Women at Work. And I pulled out one tweet for us to look at. This woman says, if we had a dollar every time someone asked about our hair, we could reduce the racial and gender pay gap.
We shall make no comments, Brian and I, really. about Alison at all. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll be, we'll be in trouble. We'll be in trouble. We'll trouble. <laughs> Alison, thanks a lot. Alison with the press review on France 24. Next half hour uh, for you on the programme. Um, we're with some of the 22,000 asylum seekers here in France, waiting to be, uh, be transferred back uh, to the country in which they were first registered in, in Europe. Now, under European rules, that the only country where they can legally claim asylum. That's our special report then in the next half an hour. Thank you.